Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm super geeked out to be here as somebody who's been teaching herself processing since like 2007 out of like the orange book um, and seeing actual humans <laughs> that I've been following online for a long time. I just have to say I'm really, really, um, I feel like it's a huge privilege to be here and I'm really, really happy. Um, so please come say hi to me. I don't know like anybody. Come say hi to me later. Um, my talk is called A Cohort, Not a Curriculum. I think you'll find that um, it may be more accurately termed a cohort and a curriculum. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sort of lab and cohort of students I manage in Ogden, Utah. Um, so this is, this is Utah. You've probably seen skiing in Utah and mountains. This place that looks like the surface of Mars is right outside of Robert Smithson's spiral jetty. Uh, these are my parents. And this is actually what it looks like. There are no camera tricks here. So I encourage you to come visit um, for wild spaces like this. I'm at a school called Weaver State University. We are an open enrollment state school, which means my students need a high school diploma to get in and they pay no more than $6,000 a year in tuition, um, if they pay that, and most of them don't. Um, so we're, we're all about access. Um, we, that means we have a lot of students of non-traditional age, a lot of students who work full-time, a lot of students who are parents. Um, there are a lot of other diversity markers that we are not hitting. Um, for example, we are way behind on serving the Hispanic population uh, of Ogden which far outpaces our, our numbers. But um, I'm in the Department of Arts and Humanities and in the, or the College of Arts and Humanities and the Department of Visual Art and Design. Uh, we have about 400 majors. We graduate about 30 BFAs a semester or a year. And this is my lab, um, and that's the actual view. I, I started this out of a small, small, small capital improvement grant that I had a week to write. Um, which means I got a bunch of equipment and I had a lot of money, but I had no, no program, no staffing, no curriculum to support it. Uh, but uh, those of you who are in academics and probably other disciplines know you have to take the money when you get it, uh, so we did. Um, what's great about this space and what I'm here to talk to you about is the fact that because this is my side hustle, uh, I also direct the core curriculum. Because this is my side hustle, because I had no plan, I have to let my students run this space. I have to let them take the lead on, on what happens here. So I probably wouldn't, I'm not sure what I would have got, I guessed, but I don't think this is the list of things I thought would happen in my lab when I first grabbed the money. Um, so my students are now doing mixed reality projects, interactive projections, vinyl cut installations, plotter drawings, web-based art, materialist histories, bookmaking, and even mixed media painting. Um, I don't think I would have done a very good job guessing, and I'm, I'm happy that this is what's happening and not what I guessed, and certainly not what my, uh, my administrators would have wanted, right? So, so, so it's working out. Um, and there are about four things that make this successful um, in my mind so far. So we've only been open a year and a half, not even two years. Uh, so it's a really kind of infant project. Um, but a few things. One is that our core curriculum introduces technology in a really friendly way. So you don't have to elect to be a media student or a tech student. Um, you go into a, a course called Surface Shape and Form, and the first thing you do is draw pictures in processing. Um, and we just smile and get through that. A lot of them don't know they're going to be in a computer lab, much less doing coding. Um, but so far, it works. Uh, we just pretend like that's what you do in an intro art class, and they roll with it. Um, in their basic design concepts class, they model in VR and 3D print those objects. And so it's, it's happening in the thousand level courses before you can decide whether you do tech or not. So we just kind of hit them with it early on. This is, this is one of my um, uh, core, found, core curriculum students. And we, so we do a project like this, right? So this is a plotter drawing generated and processing done on top of an inkjet print. So we kind of take them through their paces. Um, and they do this in the fourth week of the curriculum. And a student like this is one that I might bring into my cohort as we move forward. Um, the other thing, I mentioned I have no staffing. I have a group of students who want access to our facility. Um, they're my lab rats. I'm real cheesy and they're okay with that. Um, they kind of roll with it. I get to be kind of geeky so they don't have to. Um, 
the magic, the important thing about my assistants is they get access to the lab for one hour of monitoring a week. Uh, and I'll, I'll remind you later that I have to enforce that. If I see them putting in two, three, four hours, I gotta pull them back and make sure they're taking care of themselves before they take care of my lab. So there they are, they're, they're so very sweet. And, and as you, you might imagine, they kind of take up residence in that space pretty quickly. And, and they get real protective of it. <laughs> so some of the things they're kind of working on and tinkering with in their spare time. Okay, the, the third is the, what my students call Cyborg Book Club. This started as an informal reading group. Um, I got them started with a reading list, but they do most of the heavy lifting now in finding readings um, and um, developing projects. So most students started out because it was fun, because they needed vocabulary to talk about the things they were thinking about. Um, but should they want to earn independent study credit, they write papers, they do projects, um, and and the, the advantage to this is that I read things I wouldn't have read. I read things I've always been meaning to read. Um, but, it, but with or without credit, I had students at their peak reading 100 to 200 pages a week over the summer for fun um, in this track. So, so there, I think there was something about that engagement and vulnerability that made that work. Um, students in that book group are people like Monica Bone. This is also from my intro class. That's a processing drawing. She made a beautiful book out of that. That's a plotter drawing from her book. Um, and uh, Lou Lily Schaefer, really interested in interiority and exteriority. Um, so even though we're sitting in the lab and we're talking a lot about technology, my students aren't necessarily screen people um, through and through. Um, so Lou Lily does a lot of painting and we learned very early that she's a lousy writer. She's brilliant, she's great in discussion, but if you ask her to write a formal paper, it fails miserably. So, um, so in place of that, we, she's writing the sort of poetic, hyperlinked, heavily footnoted response that looks an awful lot like her paintings. And finally, I have independent study students. Um, I usually take a small group and they've gotta have complementary skills. I don't have time to really teach anything to this cohort, so they really have to teach each other. I'm there to make space, they do most of the heavy lifting. Um, the, we track progress in Google Docs, um, and, and one of the things that's worked well for me is that the students might be doing a project in sculpture or painting, and they can earn credit with me for documenting their workflows in the lab. So they're building a library of procedures and processes and resources. Okay, and I got my one minute, so I'm gonna fly through uh, a few other projects. This is Des Bathke, plotter drawings, thinking about princesses and coloring books. Um, in the center is Katie Shearer, thinking about um, augmented reality experiences. April Topham, doing, uh, that's a, like a processing uh, drawing tool layered into a painting. And James Olson doing work kind of like this. Um, I think this is my most important slide, so I'll get through this and I'll get out of your way. Um, this, is, this is the thing I am learning as, as I've built this project. Um, and at some point, I feel like I became the establishment, and I'm not sure as an art student when that happened. Um, but if you ask um, the, the folks in the office, my administrators, what a technology program should do, they tell me design thinking, internships, coding, 21st century, workforce development, right? Industry partnerships, um, interdisciplinary, whatever that means. Um, but when you ask my students, they think that we should be talking about things like cyborg fem feminism, mental health awareness, sustainable technology. Um, all my students have decided new materialism is like the thing right now. Um, they're making augmented reality artworks. They're interested in issues of privilege, accessibility, information security, and surveillance. Um, so I suppose I have no answers, but my question for you um, and the thing I'd love to hear more from you about later is how it is we sort of sustain this subculture when the funding is coming from this dominant culture. Um, and I have plenty more to talk about if you're interested, but I'll, I'll give my space to the next speaker. Thank you very, very much for having me.